All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, agenda for uh, call to order City of Clear Lake Shore City Council regular meeting May 18th, 2021, at 6 30. All council members are all in attendance. Uh, item number two pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Texas flag. Item number three, reports from council. Councilman Steve Wordis. Hit it one more time, it'll turn red around the microphone. There you go. Just one time, hit it once. Just one time. No, no, push it. There you go. Now, sorry, now we're on. See the little ring right here, the red ring? It turns on. I, I just noticed it wasn't coming on earlier. Thank you. I have one item. Uh, I reached out to Chief Keel, and I'm sure he'll probably elaborate a little bit in a moment uh, with regard to some of the residents have expressed concern about excessive uh, speed along Birch Road between Clear Lake Road and East Shore. I personally have witnessed this from time to time, um, and I'm not sure if it's repeat offenders or if it's uh, sporadic, but still short of um, putting in speed bumps and things like that. I was just wondering what the chief might uh, recommend or if there's a possibility of doing a study or something um, to see if this has some merit and uh, to uh, take appropriate action, whether that is a uh, temporary speed monitor where people would be aware of their speed or perhaps just uh, some additional law enforcement to monitor this. Um, but we'd like to... Uh, address this before something happens and somebody gets injured. That's all. Here we go. I'm pretty smart. <laughs> yes, I, I received your email. Um, I believe the mayor has been working on our speed trailer. Uh, that's probably be one of the places, first places we deploy it. But we're going to increase enforcement on that on that roadway. The stop signs. There's a new stop sign on the uh, on the bridges or between uh, in the Lazy Bend area. Um, we just we're just going to try to get some compliance um, with more activity over there. So uh, you'll be seeing a lot of police cars over there, and uh, possibly that speed trailer parked down by the uh, entrance to uh, Jarbo. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Worst. Thank you, Chief Keel. Uh, Councilman Rick Fisher. No, we had a uh, meeting yesterday with the uh, Parks and Pool Committee. Uh, several things were uh, discussed there, just uh, the progress on the pool. Um, I guess you're going to be giving an update on that one? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm not going to steal your thunder. Right. That was one of the things that we are also uh, talking about, possibly uh, you know, speed bumps or something to help control the speed on uh, – on Birch Road there just from um, it seems to be a number of uh, excessive speed uh, demons going up and down there so yeah, it looks like we'll be addressing that and then I'll let you uh, fill everybody in on the rest of it for uh, the parts pool. All right thank you Mr. Fisher. Um, next is Councilwoman Monica Leday. I attended the JCTD meeting and it really didn't apply much to Clear Lake Shores the bulk of it was about Texas City and their plans on um, expanding the park and ride area out there. Um, one note that I made um, that kind of could apply to us as far as thinking future, um, the electri electrification of public vehicles is a huge thing right now and apparently there are several grants that the Biden administration has put out there um, that we could pro probably capitalize on. That's it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Lede. And next is Councilman Alex Scanlon. I have nothing this evening. All right. Thank you, Mr. Scanlon. 
Next is, sorry, I've got a bunch of windows opening up. Uh, Councilman Randy Croster. I don't have anything to report. I think Richard's here. He'll give a report for roads and drainage. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cronister. I uh, just got a couple things. Uh, first one is, uh, on a sad note, uh, in 2018, a 17-year-old gunman opened fire in an art classman classroom at Santa Fe High School in Galveston County. Eight students and two teachers were killed while about a dozen others were injured, including a Santa Fe Independent School District police officer who was dispatched to the scene in what would become Texas' worst mass shooting to date. Let's take a moment of silence to remember this horrific day three years ago that those lost their lives and all the affected families. Please recognize this silence. Thank you. Next is uh, I want to extend a, a sincere thanks to everyone that came out to the uh, keep on wanting to say crawfish, but it was a shrimp boil, 200 pounds, and everybody that helped out with that was, uh, I think it was a pretty good success and look forward to do it again next year. And it was nice to be able to get everybody out and, uh, you know, and see their, their gorgeous faces. So thanks for everybody that came out and volunteered with that. Uh, then also a reminder for uh, Birch Road, we have a ribbon, ribbon cutting this uh, Thursday at 1 o'clock with Judge Henry and uh, Commissioner Atfill. Um, so we'll be uh, recognizing that, and that was part of the uh, 2017 uh, Galveston County bond um, election that was passed. So that new bridge is put in place because of that. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, next is staff reports. Police Department Chief Keel. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, touching on that subject, there, the the bridges that are go through Lazy Bend. That roadway has traditionally been Galveston County Sheriff's Office, but with the bridges being completed, uh, the county is turning over that jurisdiction to us uh, for enforcement purposes, maintenance, things like that. And uh, so that's a, a new stop sign has been posted there. Uh, you'll see that as it's because of the crosswalk, of the way the design came out. Uh, sidewalks on one side, you got to cross over the other side. And then cross back, uh, so we'll we'll be pretty strict on that. We're not going to just jump into writing tickets over there, but we're going to be there a lot, and uh, we we want to get people to comply and realize that there's a stop sign there because it's it's pedestrian traffic, and we want to you know maintain safety as much as we can there. The only thing I have to report um, uh, on the Genetech uh, reporting system that the Galveston County Law enforcement agencies use and the district attorney's office uses to pull reports and videos. That's in place. I'm, I'm currently uploading our uh, office reports into that system. Very simple to use. What that's going to do is going to cut down on paper usage. We're not going to be printing hard copies of, of reports anymore. We're not storing and maintaining files, uh, you know, hard copy of files. It's all digital. And and uh, it's, it's going to be more efficient. Uh, I'm as excited as I can be about that because uh, if you saw the process before, uh, you would wonder how we ever got anything done. And uh, that's going to free us up to, to do other things and be more efficient. So I'm, I'm real proud of that. I'm still working out some kinks, but those are on my side in learning what, uh, how the system operates. And I need to learn it better so I can teach the others how to use it. But uh, we're real close to not making uh, any hard copies anymore, so uh, I think that's a great thing. So that's really all I have. Thank you, Chief Keel. I look forward to saving some trees there. Maybe we'll get an award out of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good job. Uh, next is building official Kevin Harrell. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, for my building report from May 5th to May 18th, uh, issued 18 permits. Uh, all 18 permits have been minor construction. I still have six homes being constructed in different states of construction throughout the island. New construction, Galveston Bay Brewing Company. I've been reviewing the drawings for last week. Also, the fire marshal is also looking at the drawings. I hope to have those approved sometime this week. Code enforcement. 
I have nine code enforcement cases right now. All nine are junk vehicles on Tyndall, varying from cars to some boats on the channel. Uh, the unsafe structure, 419 Oak. Uh, demolition is still slow. He has filled three rollout, 30 yard rollout uh, dumpster. Unfortunately, he still hasn't taken down the second floor and the main structure and the back structure. Uh, he is now 60 days as of yesterday, which means he has 30 days left on the order given by this council. And I will be bringing it back for public hearing next meeting if you have any questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Harrell. Next is Clear Lake Shores Kima Volunteer Fire Department, Chief Rob Saniga. Good afternoon. Um, the statistics for the month of April, we had 42 total calls for service, 23 of those were fire incidents, and 19 of those being first responder or medical. Our average response time was six minutes flat with an average turnout time of one minute and 20 seconds. Um, 4.76 of those calls for service were overlapping. Um, we didn't have anything too major um, last month, but we did receive $37,000 in grants between the county and the Texas Forestry Service, and we'll be using those funds to upgrade multiple units within our fleet. Um, the big thing that will be involved in both cities will be the ISO audit that is upcoming. So um, that will probably start at the end of next month, and we will be hosting the ISO auditor sometime in December. So um, that's going to involve us having to go to both cities and get information on um, the fire marshals that they're using, um, as well as code enforcement items and what have you. So um, we'll be hearing quite a bit of that uh, in the next couple of months. But other than that, that's all I have. So Robert, on the uh, ISO audit, we'll let uh, Brent and Kevin know about that so they can get yeah. things put together. They'll be, yeah, hearing quite a bit from me, so. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. All right, next is uh, Galveston County Health District, Amy Weber. Good evening, Council. Uh, for the month of April, we ran 55 calls in Kima, six uh, calls in Clear Lake Shores. We had six mutual aids to San Leon area. Um, we also received six uh, mutual aids. Uh, average shoot time is about one minute and 34 seconds, and average response is about five minutes and 48 seconds, and we've kind of been staying pretty steady there and nothing else really to report at this time. All right, thank you, Ms. Weber. And uh, I know last week was National Police Week, but I want to extend the thanks to the uh, Fire Department EMS for everything y'all do. I know thank it's you. a lot of work y'all do behind the scenes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, City Administrator Brent Spear. Good evening. Uh, you have my written report. Some of the highlights and things that are going on, I'm sure they'll probably be touched on by our parks. Uh, pool plastering uh, continues. Right now we're working with water chemistry and brushing, but the uh, in speaking with the vendor, I believe we'll have that available for Saturday use, and we will roll that out through our social media to make that announcement officially, uh, barring any unseen per, uh, circumstances. Uh, looks really good, and I'm excited to have everyone uh, not only see it, but uh, use it. So um, that's that's a big deal. On our east parking lot uh, at the entrance to residential area in town center, that uh, we are waiting for center point to install a meter so that we can do final checkout on that. Uh, we don't anticipate any problems, however, center point uh, evidently has some other things in front of us. As soon as that's done, they will get over and install that and we'll move forward. The west lot didn't require any new power, so it had power existing. That is functional and up and running. And if you've had an opportunity to see that at night, it uh, lights up pretty nice. So uh, we'll duplicate that in the east lot. The, uh, of course, the bridge uh, ribbon cutting is coming up. 
I did notice that uh, I called it Galveston Bay Brewing Company. Kevin did too. That's out of habit, but I think they've had a rebrand, and now they're just Galveston Bay Brewing. So uh, I'll have to change that, and not only my mind, but on some of my paperwork. As far as uh, dead trees or trees, trees or native grasses that are tall in the air, palm trees, uh, we'll be getting those uh, trimmed, and then we'll be identifying ones that uh, need to be monitored. So if you see some fluorescent uh, flagging tape that's normally used for surveys wrapped around trees, uh, there's a reason for that, and that's so we can, number one, monitor them and identify them for further further work, whether that's tear down or cart them off or replacement. So you will see that happening. Uh, did meet with the engineering company at Shellmark, Shellmark Engineering at the boat ramp. That's in regards to boating access with Texas Parks and Wildlife Grant and uh, anticipate having some initial plans possibly this week or next. And then we will um, go through there and, and make some, uh, I'm sure we'll make some small changes, but then that will be able to be presented for that grant program. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. With regard, <coughs> excuse me, with regard to the dead trees and stuff like that, uh, I have a couple which I'm not sure are going to make it or not. Um, and I'm just wondering, uh, I'm not alone, I'm certain. Mm -hmm. <coughs> if we were to utilize a company, I'm just thinking out loud, that's all. If we were to utilize a company to come in and remove them, dispose of them properly, uh, and if it could be, um, well, first of all, if it's on the easement, that's the responsibility of the homeowner, correct? If it's, if it's in the right of way, it would certainly be a city uh, issue. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just saying that if, uh, if I'm trying to help out the residents, just thinking ahead a little bit, that if uh, there were some trees that uh, where the resident could benefit from having the service that's coming out for the city, where they would pay a proportional if fare or a rate or something like that. If there could be some uh, cost savings due to mob mobilization, demobilization, that exactly that could certainly be looked at. Just just thinking out loud. And uh, that's one thing. I'm sure we'll send this out for for a request for quote or proposal and um, kind of fast track that because there are a great many vendors that have sp some special skills in removing those and that can be uh, part of the addendum that maybe they can work with the uh, other city residents at a reduced rate but that would be separate of the city that would not be something the city would be co making collections on or or making part of our scope of work but we could include that and part of i'm not an arborist and so part of marking these trees is uh just to make sure that we're marking the right ones and we get an accurate count. So yes, to add to that, I remember recollect uh, years ago they were cutting the trees around uh, the waterfronts and they made a deal where if the uh, residents contacted them, they would cut their trees, but it was separate contacts, but it was at, at a reduced rate. But that's something you'd have to see if they'd be able to uh, offer that or not. Okay. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I would think that that would be something that they would likely incorporate since they're already here. All right, thank you, Mr. Spear. And I'm okay. sure Center Point will come out and put their meter can in faster than they keep our power turned on. <laughs> All right, item number five, committee reports, parks and pools. Ms. Richardson. Well, we had a meeting scheduled at the pavilion just as the rainstorm came in last night, but we got there. I want to thank Rick for coming last night into the rain. Um, this was intended to be a short meeting because our main function this month was the ice cream social membership sign up on May uh, 6th. And um, several members from our committee, Kelly Brown, Melissa Stuffer, Diana Chronister, Pam House, all came and helped with uh, that membership sign up. And we want to thank Tiffany from the city for coming over and the Civic Club for bringing all that great ice cream and all their goodies with it. So 
Uh, I think it was pretty good success. I think we had about 55 members or so sign up that night. Um, we discussed last, well, actually, we first discussed it last month about the problems on Birch, because one of our committee members, Melissa Stouffer, is living there. So we discussed those issues last month and then um, um, revisited it last night, and Brent did explain that it was going to kind of be referred to the police and see how that can best be monitored, rather than just trying to push for speed bumps and see what they can work out. So that kind of is resolved as far as our point, uh, regarding our committee at this time. Um, we, um, of course, discussed the pool issue, and Brent further explained the issues involved in curing that pool once the water's in it and the chemical balance and all that, which I was really not aware of. So he gave us a really good explanation of what's all involved in that. And we had intended to go walk into the pool to really see it up close. Hopefully maybe some new furniture would be there because we've been really anxious to see the finished pool, but we didn't get in the pool last night with the rain and all. And then we wanted to check the recovery of the uh, landscaping and our Siam tulips, watching for those to come up. We planted those several years ago. Everybody loved them. Nice, bright color there. So, uh, but we will do that at another time. So that was our meeting. It was uh, meant to be a shorter meeting last night. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Next is roads and drainage, Mr. Sowery. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt and Council. Um, I, you have my report, so I'll just be brief. Uh, on the eight, 19th of April, uh, we met to review and continue making changes to an ordinance to manage drainage from adjacent properties. We've been working on that for the past three meetings. Alex has been leading the committee, and I want to thank him for his effort. Uh, we met again on the 28th to finalize those changes. The changes are being reviewed by legal now and should be available to present to council next month. This year we will focus on basic road main maintenance and uh, drainage improvement. Next year we plan to resurface Blue Point and Narcissus before the hurricane season. Hopefully we'll get to that uh, in, in a timely manner. We received a copy of the Pavement Management Group program which we purchased uh, about three or four months ago. And um, we got that last week, and we'll be reviewing it in more detail. Uh, the acceptance of that program by the Roads and Drainage and the City Administrator should be done by the end of this month or in June. Next meetings will focus on the following. We'll be integrating the, this pavement management group uh, program into our maintenance strategy. Uh, we'll be identifying contractors to maintain our ditches, which we're are actively looking for contractors to do that. And then we'll be finalizing master drainage plan and our road maintenance specifications. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Sowery. Next is uh, Zoning Board of Adjustments. Mr. Michalski. Uh, nothing to report to Zoning Board of Adjustments All right. or for uh, the previous. All right. Thank you, Mr. All right, next is waterfront compliance. No report. All right. <laughs> next is item number six, Civic Club Activities Report. Okay. Um, we had the garage sale on Saturday. Um, the Civic Club made about $850 in profit. We had 65 to 75 people sign up to put their house on the list plus all the hot dogs and sausages that we sold. Uh, we did discover that next year we have to have hot dogs ready at 8 o'clock because people wanted hot dogs at 8 o'clock. Um, we have next event is going to be Steak and Sinatra on June 19th. Then we will have um, 4th of July festivities on July 3rd which is a Saturday. And we will have our meeting the first week of June in the clubhouse. All right, thanks, Teresa. 
Next is uh, item number seven, Economic Development Corporation. Uh, President Boltinghouse had a business function he had to attend. Uh, just to bring you up to speed, uh, still working on a licensing agreement for Galveston Bay Brewing in relation to the uh, parking lot area, allowing them access to that. Uh, that has not been, <clears throat> as far as I know, come through uh, legal, so that will be finalized. And uh, I brought you up to date on the east parking lot already in that project. All right. Thank you, Mr. Speer. Next is uh, item 8, public comments. At this time, any person with city-related business may speak to the city council. In compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, city council may not deliberate. Comments from the public should be limited to a maximum of three minutes per individual. At this time, we open it up to the public comments. Having none, we'll close item number eight. Item number nine, old business, discussion of possible action may be taken on the following items. Item A is appoint, appointment of a mayor pro tem. Uh, just to start off with this one here, we did send out an email um, to the uh, um, council members. Uh, our city secretary, Ms. Stroop, looked into this, and after uh, we didn't get a second for the um, name that was on there, um, the, the motion died, and we shouldn't have uh, moved any further, taken on any other motion. So we're bringing this back to uh, ask council to select the mayor pro tem. I'd like to make a motion to uh, nominate Randy Cronister for the position of Mayor Pro Tem. All second. All right. Motion and second. Motion by Mr. Fisher, second by Mr. Scanlon. Any discussion? Having none, all in favor, aye. 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 And any opposed? No. Motion passes unanimously. Item B, appointment of representative and an alternate to the Houston Galveston Area Council 2021 General Assembly. Uh, so this one here, again, we reached out to them, and so I know, Monica, you already had your name assigned to this one, I believe. And so it just to make it easier, it was easier just to come back to council and, and reselect the primary, and we have to have an alternate for that. Kurt, I thought that was me. I think me. that's Alex. Is yeah. it Alex? It doesn't have to be. But it was <laughs> Alex. Yeah, it yeah. was Alex, all right. I'm on the so other one. I stand corrected, it is Alex. And so, in that case, we just brought it back. So, it, if you want to do it again, that's fine. Um, but it's up to council to decide which ones they want to do. So, that's the background on that. Do we need to, like, make a motion? So, we have to make a motion for a primary and alternate. All right, I make a motion for Alex to be primary and Monica Lede to be alternate. I'll second. All right, motion by Ms. Lede and second by Mr. Fisher for Alex to be primary and Ms. Lede to be um, alternate. Any discussion? Having none, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Having none, motion passes unanimously. And item C is a traffic study for FM 2094 to change speed limit 40 miles an hour to 35 miles per hour starting at Lazy Lane entrance next to the new buildings at Stewart Elementary to Lawrence Road. So the history on this was originally on City Council in October 7th of 2020 with the Lazy Bend uh, Bridge. Um, knowing about that was gonna be knocked out. A lot of uh, safety concerns with folks, children, bikes, walking on the sidewalk, and or maybe golf carts. Not supposed to be going that way, but possibly. Um, council took a vote on that to uh, approach TxDOT and see if uh, they could lower the, the, ro the road speed limit to 35. Uh, to that end, um, met with uh, 
nobody on the Harris County and finally was able to get through with somebody on the Galveston County side. Um, and uh, you may say, well, why were you doing on Harris County? Well, they, they take care of major, most of the roads, so that's the reason why. Anyway, got through them, and then they put it out there to their traffic study folks, and Lord behold, behold they came back with their final recommendation to allow it to go to 35 miles an hour but it was right when the bridge was completed. <laughs> <laughs> so since council passed that, we went off and did what we needed to do and, and they've come back and made a recommendation. With that recommendation, it's a study behind it and, and it asks for council's approval through resolution of the city in order for that to be passed. That's the history. Um, and when I, I need a motion. I motion to change the speed limit to 40 miles, no, from 40 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour. I will second. All right, I have a motion to change it from 40 to 35 by Ms. Lede and second by Mr. Wordis. Discussion? So do we still need to do this with the bridge being open? In my opinion, um, I, it goes either way. The only thing I would caution, there's several out there, and, and I'll let Chief Keel speak on behalf of this in a second, but um, one, it, it does allow by state statute that golf carts can travel on a road or in the daytime within speed limits at 35 or below. So that means it opens up access to possibly Watergate. There is some concerns or issues with um, the Lawrence Road being the dead, dead or the end of it and then Lazy Lane. So there would be have to be some um, work with Galveston County to make sure it actually started at the Home Depot traffic light to include the school zone when and not in a, a speeding zone session and also to go all the way to Watergate. It's kind of tricky there because the uh, city limits go to Watergate on the northern side of 2094, but on the southern side it stops before West Marine at uh, Lawrence Road. So there's that benefit. The school issue has resolved itself by time and the bridge being completed. So it's a lot of uh, heaviness on council to, to make this decision. And also, in my opinion, then you also have the optics of, of going from 40 miles an hour to 35 and making it more of a speed trap. And, and that could be bad for the city and its optics. And so I'm sure Chief Keel will elaborate more on that too. So, and then lastly is that this will probably be the last time for us to be able to <clears throat> consider this because going back to them is going to be very hard for them to go and generate another report. There is a study behind it. It's not just somebody sits down and says, okay, yeah, you can do this. They actually compare and come out and take counts of cars during certain times and, and look at the speeds that are, how many cars are going over the current speed limit of 40, and it has to meet a, a justification table in order for them to make recommendations. And it, it apparently went through all those. So, so they're, they're willing to, they're, they're making the justification to allow it, but they're requiring council to, to approve it. Do we actually want golf carts on the roads? I got a question. Would you put your golf cart out there with your kids on that road? I would not. Me either. But. I was just going to say that uh, I've actually been talking, since I saw this come on the agenda on Friday, I've talked with numerous people throughout the neighborhood, just neighbors, residents, um, other uh, folks that work for the city, and some of our police officers too. And initially, a couple of the residents thought it would be a great idea to be able to have golf carts make it all the way to Watergate, but in discussing it a little bit more, just from what I've seen personally from talking to the police officers about some of the traffic that just goes flying down 2094, um, 
it just sounds like it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We're going to have the first accident of a vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed coming into contact with a golf cart. And we all know who the loser on that's going to be. And if we're lucky, it would just be somebody getting carted off in an ambulance to the hospital. I think it'd be a lot worse. I just, uh, I personally don't think it's a, uh, it's a good idea. And like I said, the number of folks that I've talked to, I did not talk to a single person that was in agreement thinking it was a good idea. Is there a way to preserve the option with TxDOT or is there an expiration date on the study? Because if we change the speed limit, it would probably be changed indefinitely. And by that logic, you'd think that the study would in stand indefinitely as well. Say we had another bridge go out, we'd be able to bring this back in a timely manner. Is that something we could, that they would entertain? I could certainly go back and approach them with that question. Chief, do you have any input? I do. Come on with it. I was patiently waiting my turn. So uh, the mayor touched on the uh, the overall appearance of us lowering the speed limit. When we're, we know why that was discussed, um, although I didn't agree with it at the, at the time it was brought up. Um, I, I certainly understand what people were talking about, uh, but we've done a lot to improve our our uh, appearance and our, our image uh, for the whole city, not just the police department. And to lower that speed limit and have people uh, believe that we did that as a, as a uh, monetary uh, or the ability to, to write more tickets to get more money, uh, you'll never convince them that there was another reason. Uh, secondarily, the speed limit's posted out there right now. And, uh, Probably not a lot of cars are going that speed limit or a little lower. Um, it doesn't matter what's on the sign. They're going to drive how fast they want to drive. Uh, when you add in a golf cart with uh, diminished protection, number one, but the, the elevated speed that those cars can be traveling, it doesn't matter what we post out on the sign, like I said, but they're going to still be driving the same speed. And then you add in, okay, so it's not you're not allowed to drive on the, the, the golf cart on the sidewalk, but we saw people do that. Uh, during the time that the bridge was closed. It doesn't matter what the rule is, people are going to do what they're going to do. Uh, it's a very bad idea uh, for a lot of reasons. I know that it would be very convenient and very relaxing to take your golf cart down to Watergate. Uh, there's just some things you're going to have to do in your car. Um, it's a bad idea to put that speed limit in that uh, area down to 35 miles an hour. You might get one or two cars that goes that speed limit, but they're not all going to do that. And I'm just afraid for our citizens, for our visitors, everybody, is, they are, they're going to be subject to a really bad accident. Uh, it's dangerous enough w at 40 miles an hour. If we lowered it you know, to 35 or 30 or even 20, and the school zone uh, doesn't even go down to 20. But people are flying through there at, at 35, 40, 50 miles an hour in the mornings. I just worry about the, the image that we would uh, project, the safety for our citizens, and uh, I, I don't want to see something bad happen. I really don't. So uh, we have to set convenience aside. We have to think about the well-being of everybody that comes down that road. That's just my opinion. Thanks, Chief Gill. Yes, Councilman Upon uh, more reflection, I'm thinking that if one was traveling along 146 and they were to turn west onto 2094, that strip from there, um, presently from there all the way to uh, League City line, I guess, is 40 mile per hour. If 40, we make it's, uh, it's 45 when you first turn on 2094. Then it goes to 40 for Clear Lake Shores. Then it goes back up to 45 and past Watergate all the way through League City <laughs> until you get to the historic district. Okay, I was under the impression it was still 40 from our limits all the way to uh, 146, but you're saying that little strip there is 45 actually? Okay. Well, I can see where, again, I wholeheartedly agree with the appearance um, of us 
establishing a speed trap, and that we certainly uh, don't want that. Um, I can also see where it would be very confusing to drivers, having to go from 45 to 35. I mean, it's already, when you go from 45 to 40, th that's reasonable, but dropping it an additional 5 mile an hour. Um, so therefore, I, 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 I would have to agree with you, Chief. This is, uh, I would not be in favor of it. Any further discussion? Let me know. I'll call for a vote. All in favor, the original motion was to approve lowering the speed limit from 40 to 35, just so council knows what the motion was. At this time, all in favor, aye. Having none, all nays. Nay. Motion fails. All right. Next is item 10, new business, consent agenda, uh, is, um, items A, B, and C. Is there any items that a uh, council member would like to be pulled? Having none, is consent agenda, is there any objections to the consent agenda? Having none, the consent agenda is accepted as is. Council business discussion of possible action may be taken on the following items. Item A, remove and approve proposed interlocal agreement 2021-05-11 regarding Galveston County Health District. Um, so this one here is, we've uh, signed it I think three or four times in the past. The big thing that they're doing is reducing the board from 13 to 5. Um, trying to find members in the public to um, join the uh, board with those backgrounds are very hard and tiresome for the commissioner's court to accomplish that. So they've asked to uh, realign this, uh, um, restructuring this uh, health district and the United Board of Health to allow five members and uh, with your approval, uh, we can enter into the agreement with them. Uh, there's several organizations, obviously, Galveston County Health, the Mosquito District, and the uh, Swimming Pool Administrative Service, Environmental Health Program, uh, Basic Public Health Laboratory Services, and Indigent Health Care is all part of this. about it. At this point, I'll call for a, a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, Proposal on the Lock Agreement 2021-05-11. Second. All right. Motion by Mr. Fisher, second by Mr. Chronister. Any discu discussion? So I didn't see in there, maybe I missed it, the five members, are, are they required to be of any specific background? Yeah, I think residency is the only requirement that I saw, which is a little unsettling. We've had 40 years of requiring qualified people to make these decisions, and yeah, I mean, we were all here for the freeze. That was not... Uh, you know, we, we all know how they got blamed on the ERCOT board, who were non-residents and not necessarily qualified. So it's, you know, that's real fresh in my mind still. That's just a big drop. I agree. I'm trying to do some quick reading here, but uh, I believe it's still within the commissioner's court. And this is coming from the commissioner's court with an interlocal agreement with what sixteen cities. So, but yeah, and they're they're basically saying there's a it's a financial hardship that we're going to have to pitch in some or more because they can't find qualified persons. Which I mean, their their justification is that they can't find people to serve on the board. Which they can't find qualified people to serve on the board. They just want to take five persons. Right, but I'm, I'm concerned with the ramifications. We don't agree with it, then we may not be members of this board and we're gonna have a big health problem. 
No, absolutely. Um, it says we have until June 4th. And uh, we can contact Mr. Jed Webb, which, I, I mean, again, yeah, we're a very small entity in the, the big scheme of, of this. Yeah, I can reach out to him, and we can maybe uh, possibly table this until the next meeting. Yeah, I'd like that. So, request Okay, that then I'll uh, uh, revise my motion then to... Uh, Hold on, I was up talking. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd request you to amend your motion then. Okay. Well, that will do that. I will revise my... Uh, amend my motion to table uh, uh, the uh, proposal under lock agreement 2021-05-11. I'll second. All right, motion by Mr. Fisher, second by Mr. Cronister, and um, I guess, Brent, can you reach out to them and... Okay. All right, any further discussion? All right, having none, all in favor, aye. Any opposed, nay? Having none, motion passes. All right, item B is approval to split waterfront lease C82 into two parcels to be identified as waterfront C82A and C82B and determine minimum bid to recover associated cost of preparation for auction. And Mr. Spear will speak on this. This is a waterfront that was uh, relinquished back to the city needed some work done to it uh, by ordinance we can't have a waterfront lease currently over 40 feet so it needs to be split uh, <clears throat> based on the lines of, on C2 it appears that it's about 52 and a half feet um, in its current condition and uh, to include that enclosed uh, boat slip this is very close to the channel uh, I'm just using a ruler and kind of guessing at it. I think we can get a 19 foot and a, about a 33 foot plus or minus uh, waterfront lease out of this by splitting it. And yeah. my, re my so Adrian, can you show that up on the screen so everybody else can see what we're talking about? Sorry about that, Brandon. <clears throat> so, uh, in in looking at that, uh, I just would like to have approval to uh, to go ahead and entering an agreement to get that split again. Um, it has to be surveyed and split. And then we can go ahead and start the auction process to recover our actual costs of, of doing the uh, of doing the surveys. And then uh, with the stipulation of the leasee making necessary repairs within I think 90 days. You, you had that last one you had it there. It just needed to scroll down a little bit. Yep, just, there you go. That's the... Is, is there a, another page beyond that? That's the original, and then there's another one with, uh, so with my marks some on notes it. on it. Yeah. So that, that's the one I'm referencing. So it would split with that. One would contain that entire slip. And uh, the other would have those angled bulkheads. So, so right now, um, there's the cost for the whole survey that the city's done. Um, with whatever action comes from council tonight, there would be another survey that would need to be conducted to split it, and mm -hmm. then we would have to. That would be the minimum bids between the, t you know, each split that or something like that. Um, and that would be the minimum bid requirements uh, to auction it off. And then I think you said... There would be a contingency to make necessary repairs, and we could include the inspection report that building officials right. conducted on that. So they, they're aware of what, what needs to be completed and give them a reasonable amount of time to complete that work. Would that be 90 days, Kevin? Yes. <laughs> Anything else, Brent? No, sir. All right. So, call for a motion, Council. 
I'll make a motion to approve the split of C82 as presented. I'll second it. All right, motion by Mr. Cross, second by Ms. Lede uh, to split as presented. Any discussion? Having none, all in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? Having none, motion passes unanimously. And. Are you going to do the minimum bid? If not, we need to include that in the motion. The minimum bid is going to be the cost. So, Mr. Cross, can you amend your motion to include that it would be the split of the cost to the city for the surveys for the uh, minimum bids? Okay, I'll amend the motion to approve it as presented with that cost to the city in the approval for the, uh, what do you call, silent bid? Uh, auction. Auction. I second. All right, motion by Mr. Cronister, second by Ms. Lede uh, to split C82 as presented and to include the cost uh, occurred by the city uh, and be deemed per the uh, minimum bid to recover those costs. Any further discussion? Having none, all in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? Having none, motion passes. Item C is appoint two council members to the Plaza 1006 Corporation, is, which is to replace um, Jan Bailey and Christy Lyons. And uh, the Plaza 10 is a corporation that represents the city that allows us to conduct uh, business uh, in which it owns real estate consisting of Okies and the West parking lot. And um, those that board consist of five members and so unfortunately and I'm a member and so one council member would not be a member and so today uh, Mr. Cronister is a member Miss Mr. Fisher is a member and we have two positions open Go ahead. It, proper procedures that I would like to volunteer. Sure. Or, yeah, or you can make a motion to put yourself on there. Then I make a motion <laughs> to put myself on there, please. And do you have somebody else? I'll do it. And Monica, the day as well. All right, I have a motion for Mr. Wordis and Ms. Lede on the board. We have a second. I'll second it. All right, second by Ms. Lede. Any discussion? Having none, all in favor, aye. Any opposed, nay? Motion passes unanimously. Item number 11 is adjournment. Meeting is adjourned at 724.